welcome everybody and thank you for joining us for this presentation. Um, I'm going to start with a brief PowerPoint introduction and then we'll jump right into product. Um, and again, as Ryan mentioned, if you have questions, you can chat them um, and we'll uh, answer questions as we go, I think, or um, and then catch up at the end of the presentation. All right, so just a little bit about who we are. So Retail Control Systems, that's what RCS stands for. Um, we're a technology provider. Um, we have been around since 1987. Um, we are an NCR Platinum Counterpoint provider. Um, so NCR Counterpoint is essentially all that we do. So as far as product sales, installation, training, ongoing support, um, that's, that's what we do. We provide um, nationwide support with offices throughout the U.S. Um, we have a dedicated team of NCR CounterPoint specialists. Our goal is to make sure that we provide you with the services that you need to ensure long-term success with the CounterPoint product. Um, and today we service roughly about 4,000 or so retail stores uh, worldwide. Some of the services that we provide include managed hosting, um, project management and implementation. Uh, we do uh, product training that can be done via web, on site, or in a classroom environment, uh, report customizations, uh, integration services, data conversion. So I know everyone wants to make sure they don't have to start all over. We can get your data out of your existing system and into CounterPoint. And then we provide um, aftermarket support 24-7, 365 days a year critical care support. So let's talk a little bit about NCR CounterPoint. Um, so the technology for NCR CounterPoint is a window. So it's built on a Microsoft SQL, um, it is, uh, uh, runs on Windows-based technology, so Windows 10 or 11. Um, we do offer all-in-one units um, that are optimized to run with CounterPoint, but of course, if you have your own Windows technology today, um, we could utilize that. Um, it use, uses standard peripherals like Epson receipt printers, Zebra label printers, um, and Genico payment terminals as well. Again, it is built under Microsoft SQL. So it's a SQL-based application, um, industry standard tool. Um, there are APIs available that allow you the ability to connect uh, CounterPoint to other applications that are on the market. Um, so for example, we work with um, outbound software and we've built an interface between CounterPoint and outbound to help manage um, event tickets, um, um, online ticketing and so forth. So that's one example, but we also have many others like e-commerce, um, financial applications, um, tax programs like Avalara, um, loyalty and marketing programs, and also business intelligence program. Business intelligence programs are some of the other um, standard tool integrations that we've done. Um, we do offer options for mobile. So um, if you're looking to uh, you know, be untethered from the cash wrap area and you wanna be on the floor selling, or if you're a garden center and you wanna um, you know, be in the yard and make sales, um, then CP Mobile is a great option for you. It does run under iOS technology. It allows you to do point of sale and inventory functions like physical inventory, receivings, and so forth. Um, you can also do customer lookups and inventory lookups. It works with your CounterPoint database. So it's gonna actually um, make a call to the server and get that information. Um, we also have a, uh, a product called MIMS, which is a mobile inventory management system. Um, it's all focused on inventory. It runs on Android. Um, it actually doesn't require a direct connection via the internet. It can actually run locally and then sync data up. Um, so if it's inventory you're looking at, then you know, we would uh, talk to you about which one makes more sense um, for you. And then CounterPoint will run on Windows um, tablets. So a, a, a Surface tablet, uh, HP tablet, um, and we have other tablets that we offer as well. So as long as it's Windows 10 or 11, um, CounterPoint will run on it. Ryan, do we wanna pause for a question? It looks like we have a question here. 
Uh, they answered, they asked about mobile options and okay. then you went right into mobile. So I think right. we covered that. Great. Um, as far as e-commerce is concerned, Counterpoint takes a step into e-commerce by allowing you the ability to flag an item that you want to sell on the web. And you can edit some description um, and do a little bit of maintenance within Counterpoint. Um, it acts as the data database for an e-commerce site. Um, you do need to add a connector. We work with a company called Modern Retail that produces a connection between Magento sites, Big Commerce site, Shopify, and WooCommerce sites. So if you're using one of those platforms, there's already an integrator available for you to just integrate your counterpoint data to your e-commerce platform. We also do custom integrations too. So if you are um, looking for that functionality, but you're not using one of these, um, we can certainly talk to you about doing a, a custom integration. And then this is just a snapshot of some of our customers. So as you can see, we're kind of all over the place. Um, we work with museums, we work with sporting goods stores, lawn and garden, um, uh, just uh, liquor stores. I don't think I have one on here, but we work in liquor stores as well. Um, as, you, as you'll see when we go through CounterPoint, it's very um, uh, configurable. So you can really make the system work for your business and it's been around for a while. So there's lots of features and functionality that are built into the system that you can, you can add and really helps make CounterPoint essentially your own system. So let's take a look at the product here. So I'm gonna flip over to CounterPoint and hopefully this uh, connection occurs with ease. Um, so you should be seeing my CounterPoint system Ryan, yeah. speak up. If, okay, great. <laughs> if, I was going to say speak up if we're not. Okay, so when you log into CounterPoint, first of all, you can have your own custom splash screen. This is just a generic one, but um, you can customize your splash screen as well. So when you log into CounterPoint, you're going to pick your company, um, your user. Um, this is grayed out, but it, for PCI compliance purposes, um, a, a complex password is what's recommended for CounterPoint, and then your work group, and then you'll log into the system. Now, how you log in is what you're gonna what you're gonna see when you get here. So, when you your login credentials determines um, what what you see. So, if I'm a cashier and I log in as a cashier, I'm gonna see just um, basically my point of sale functions. Um, I'm logged in as a manager, so I can show you everything that CounterPoint has to offer. So let's just talk a little bit about the user interface. So this is the behind the scenes. So this is the back office. Um, up here, you'll see my recently, recently used functions. So this is where I last went when I went into this uh, CounterPoint database. And these are my favorites. So um, you can just go into CounterPoint and say, I want to make vendors um, on my favorites menu. And um, there it is. So it's, it's a matter of just starring it. Um, as far as lookups are concerned, this is one of my favorite features. When you're just starting to get to know CounterPoint, it's great to be able to just say, show me everything having to do with tax information in CounterPoint. So I can just start searching for that, scroll down. This is where you do your setup. This is where you set up your authorities, your tax codes, et cetera. Um, so that's a great, a great feature. You can also do things like add a separate folder. So I have a manager's app folder, and this has some functions that I might wanna to get to, like a special report, my drawer management. You can actually set up a button to launch Excel and add additional programs on there as well. Um, so let me go through uh, some of the functions that are in CounterPoint. Essentially, everything you see here, point of sale, inventory tracking, customer management, purchasing, sales history, uh, e-commerce. This basically, as I said, it just scratches the surface. You need that connector. Um, time card functionality, data interchange. This is all part of the base application in CounterPoint. So when you purchase a CounterPoint license, this is all that comes with it, okay? Um, system, this is where you're gonna go to do things like set up an accounting interface. So important to point out that CounterPoint does everything for the store. So as far as buying product, receiving product, selling product, and it actually produces a distribution file that then can go to your general ledger. 
Um, so it doesn't have a GL system built in or an accounts payable system. So you'll need to um, create either, we'll need to either create an integration so it automatically integrates with some products like QuickBooks and, and um, Great Place Dynamics and some of the Sage products, or we can do a custom interface uh, to send that data over to your financial application. Or you can also just print a distribution report. Um, so there are options to just print the distribution report, hand it to your accountant, and then let them um, enter that information into the accounting application. Um, I'm going to go into setup briefly just to show you a feature that really allows you the ability to make CounterPoint unique. So I'm going to go into setup, um, system, and then quick setup. Don't worry about all of this because when you come on board with CounterPoint, we help you set up the CounterPoint system so that it's uh, how you want it, your business to run. So we'll work with you on all of that. But I do want to show you this. So in CounterPoint, you have all of these free formed fields that you can utilize. So um, I'm in inventory right now. So this is my items. So on my item record, if I say, I want to add this field, call it season and build codes behind it, to my inventory items. It's simple to do it. You just click whether you're gonna add it, add what you wanna name it, and then build the database below it. So I have um, this here, spelled incorrectly. So I have my seasons, my departments, types, and brands. Those are some fields that I've decided that I want to be in my inventory field. So in inventory, you have, um, an extra six code-based fields as well. So inventory is when people like to really um, um, slice and dice their data for reporting purposes. So they give you some additional fields here in the inventory file. So again, I have um, five, 10, 15, 20 uh, profile fields and then six item attributes, okay? Um, I have this in inventory in customers so if you want to have a VIP or you want to track the ages of your customers um, or maybe there's sports affiliation, you could do things like that. So inventory, customers, purchasing, I have this set up for consignment. Um, point of sale, you could do some unique number, unique things like I did here. Um, I actually had, was tracking a room number for billing purposes. Um, so you can do things like that. So this, this is, again, profile field. So we'll save that because I spelled department wrong, so I'll get that updated. All right, so let's go back to CounterPoint. So um, we'll start in point of sale. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click my touch screen. Now I could have come into here, also, also gone to my favorites, but I'm going to open my ticket screen, okay? So it's going to ask me again who, who I am, so I'm going to log in. Um, pick my store because you can have multiple stores and multiple stations. Um, so if you are five stores, great. You can just um, default your employees to that their particular store. And if they happen to work in a different store, they still have their login information. They're just going to pick the store they're working in today. Um, a station means that if you have a um, gift shop that maybe also has a bakery, or a snack or a cafeteria area, you can use CounterPoint for both. And both of those CounterPoint um, uh, touch screens can look uniquely different because you associate your ticket screen with your station. So that would be an example of a station. And then, a, and then the last thing is a drawer. So I'm gonna go ahead and open. I'm gonna, I can either auto activate my drawer or if I hit activate my drawer, I have the ability to uh, you know, count down my cash. Um, but in this instance, we'll go ahead and let's just go ahead and enter a $200 amount and we'll hit OK. Or I could have hit auto activate the drawer as well. All right, so this is going to launch my ticket screen. Uh, first, it's saying uh, enter a customer because I have it set up so that when I first start a ticket, it asks me who is the customer that is associated with this ticket. So that's if you want to train your cashiers to say, are you part of our VIP program or, um, or, would our, or, or our loyalty program, you know, whatever that messaging is. So here's my touch screen. This is entirely customizable. So um, I have all different colors here. If you want to just have no colors or just 
flat gray, that's up to you. Um, you don't obviously have to sell from the touch screen. You can barcode merchandise. So I have some items here that I have um, set up and I don't know if you noticed, but you can also um, have images. So this happens to be an image that I pulled in here. The reason you might want to have an image is, sorry about the loud plane behind me. Um, the reason you might want to have an image is for loss prevention purposes so that you don't have customers switching tags on the floor. So it's, it's basically a loss prevention tool. All right. Um, at this point, if I wanted to, I could pull in a customer to this transaction, but we'll go ahead and complete this as a walk-in customer. We'll hit pay and we'll hit pay with cash. And at this point, I can enter in the cash amount. Screen here so I can see what it is. Okay, so we'll do $80. Oops. All right, I can email a receipt. I could print a gift receipt or just a regular receipt. So we'll show you what a receipt looks like. So on the receipt, you can have your logo at the top. I don't hear, um, but this is just a demo. Um, you also can have um, each, uh, each store can have their own unique receipt with customization up front. So you can have a header um, five lines of 50 characters each at the top, and then a footer, again, five lines of 50 characters each. I don't have any discounts going on here, but if I did, I have the opportunity to show discounts. You saved X amount. Um, this barcode is for a validated return. So if I'm at point of sale and I'm returning merchandise, I can simply scan this barcode and it's going to call up the transaction. Okay. Um, again, I'm getting ready to start at another ticket. So at this point, I can say, um, are you part of our loyalty program? Um, and if they are, I could scan a loyalty card or I can hit the magnifying glass to look up the customer just by typing their name. Okay, so I'm gonna add John to the ticket for this one. Um, you can have pop-up notes for customers. So in this case, um, CounterPoint does have an order function as well. So you can actually, if you're using e-commerce, you can have your customers buy online and have it drop into CounterPoint as an order. So when they come in to pick up, um, we could have a customer note here that says John has an order ready for pickup as well. Okay, so I've now added John to the ticket. Actually, what I should have done is go back to John and I want to show you the Zoom functionalities too. So CounterPoint gives the cashiers a lot of functionality to provide ex ex exceptional customer service. So here, while I have John pulled up, I could hit my Zoom button, and this will allow me to look at some details of John. I can look at John's recent sales. So if John says, hey, you know, I was in here last week and I purchased, um, you know, an Under Armour shirt, but I didn't get the receipt and it's for a gift. Can I get that? So I could click on this link for that shirt and I could come up here and reprint the receipt or I could print a, a gift receipt. Okay. And it will print out as a duplicate. And again, that is a security function. So if you want to make that a manager override, you could do that as well. All right. Um, so let me show you the lookup functionality. So if I hit the magnifying glass and I'm looking for um, that Under Armour shirt. Okay, I just start typing in what I'm looking for. I can find that item. And there's also Zoom functionalities for your items as well. So if I wanna hit the Zoom button here, I can look at recent sales and we'll find John under here. I'm sure it's that one. But I can also look at quantity on hand. So I have three locations, um, but I guess I only have quantity in one of those locations. So I have 26 on hand. But if I had quantities at all locations, I could see the quantity levels at all locations. Okay, I can also look at open POs, anything on back order. Okay, um, you could also look at item notes, and I don't have any here, but as far as notes are concerned, you can do date, time, and stamp notes. You can do automatic notes. Um, so this is a great way to help educate um, 
the consumer on the product. So if they have a question, if you have detailed notes in there, um, then you can uh, just have the cashiers be able to click that Zoom button and look at notes and, and answer their questions. All right, so this is John's making this purchase. Again, I can hit the pay button. You can pay, you can set up any payment tender that you want. So whether it's paying on account, that's an option. Um, with a credit card, with cash, I have preset denominations here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick $100 here. And again, it's prompting the receipt, just so I can say, would you like me to email the receipt, receipt or do you want a gift receipt? But if you don't want this to prompt, it's, it's designed to immediately go to your receipt printer. Okay, but this is really for demo purposes. All right, um, let me see what else I can talk about. So order functionality is built in. You have the ability to, do I have a hold button here? Um, I guess I don't. Oh yeah, here we go. You can place a ticket on hold. So if you wanna, somebody forgets their wallet, you wanna put their ticket on hold, you can do that and then recall their ticket at a later point in time. We didn't really look at um, the, the button drill downs, but you can have buttons. A lot of people barcode all their merchandise or they'll store barcodes for their vendors in their item file because you can have unlimited barcodes in your item file. Um, but if you have things around the register, um, that you want to put on a touch screen, you could do that. Um, water, um, you can have, oh, this happens to be brandy sniffers, not water, um, but you can have um, multiple units of measures uh, there. Um, Counterpoint has a built-in gift card system, so you can sell gift cards. Um, and then um, as far as returns are concerned, we talked about that because you can scan a receipt to return merchandise. Oh, okay, sorry, we'll do that at a later point. point in time. You can scan a receipt to return merchandise and that's just gonna find the ticket. But if a customer comes in to return merchandise and they don't have a receipt, you have various options to return merchandise. All right, I'm gonna pay and complete the transaction. We'll just pay the ticket balance and, um, move on. All right, so that is point of sale. Um, let's talk a little bit about inventory. So first, let me tell you that if you have items in your, your database today, which obviously if you're using a point of sale system, you do, um, data interchange is where we go to start your import process. So um, you can simply go out search for a file, um, find that file, and then um, by just showing the database, you can then just import that into um, your inventory management system. Now, I'm not gonna go and do all that, but I just wanted to show you you could do that. Um, and um, you can actually set up, you could, you could use this for new vendors, for bringing items in right in the beginning. Um, you can do data, data um, interchange for a lot of different functions in CounterPoint. So again, once your items are in CounterPoint, I recommend you come to the item record file. So this is the item record file and you can look at your items like this. I have a lot of different um, items here and here. Um, or you can hit the um, table view and this will allow you to look at all of your items. And if you want, you can uh, just come in here and pick a vendor that you wanna work with and view your items that way. Um, so then you can also here just say, I want to also add description. Maybe I wanna add that season field that we added. Um, in the profile fields, and then you can do some on-screen maintenance here. So you can copy down files as well, add seasonal items, and do all of that. All right, I'm gonna pick this item and then show you what it looks like on the actual item screen. Um, so when you go to create an item in CounterPoint, you can either 
there are multiple ways to do it. You can add an item just, you know, from just hitting the add button and filling in everything. You can copy from an item. So if you have a, a vendor that's got another item that you want to add to the mix, then you might want to just find one of those vendors items and then copy to it. And then you can just change the description and so forth. Anything you see in green is what needs to be filled in to create an item. So at a minimum, if you're gonna build a template to import into CounterPoint, you wanna make sure you have an item number, description, price, account code, stocking unit. Account code is what matches up to your um, cost of goods, your, um, your financial application. Right, um, you get a multiple vendors for an item. Um, so this is my primary vendor, but I, I may have multiple vendors that carry that item. In this case, I don't, but this is my vendor details for this particular item. So I can come here and say, um, so for this vendor, when I buy this item, this is my stocking unit. I have to purchase a minimum quantity. I'm, I'm sorry, this is my stocking unit. This is my purchasing unit. So I probably will buy by the case and one case each equals 12 each is. Maybe I have to buy a minimum of 20. Um, this will give me my lead time. It'll auto, auto calculate that. And then this is my last order and last receipt. So keep some uh, vendor information on that item record. Um, let me see. Description is all keyword searchable. So the more description you can enter in here, the easier it's gonna to be to find on point of sale, okay? These are my attribute fields that I turned on, but I'm not using because I haven't labeled them. These are my profile fields. So if you recall my season, department spelled correctly, <laughs> type, brand. So these are the ones that I added to the ticket. I'm gonna jump back here to unit of measure. So, um, so if I jump to my main tab, this is my stocking unit, okay? This is, you wanna have this be the most common selling unit that you, that you have, but you might have an alternate selling unit and that's where you will define it here. So if I have, um, let, me, let me say I'm gonna sell it by the case. So one case equals 12 eaches and then I can now add an alternate price to that. So let's say, um, We'll say that alternate price is twenty eight ninety nine, um, and then when I go to my barcode tab, I can now say um, so. This is my each barcode, but now I want to create a barcode for my case. Um, well, I'll come down here, create a barcode for my case. I can auto assign that or enter my own barcode. However, you want to do that. Define my barcode type or not, and then just store that. You can store barcodes. So if you have manufacturer's barcodes and you don't print your own, you can just store those. So you can have unlimited barcodes for, for a single item. Um, gridded is um, for clothing, so style, color, and size. If this was a gridded item, then it would uh, add three boxes to this uh, view and I could do barcodes based on grids too. So a small blue shirt has a unique barcode from a large red shirt. Okay. There's a serialized inventory option. So if you're selling electronics and they need to be serialized, you can always serialize or sometimes serialize. So always means you have to enter the serial number at point of sale. Sometimes means you can, but you can also skip it. Uh, the e-commerce tab, so this is where I said, if you want to integrate um, with e-commerce, you can turn this item on as an item that you want to be published to the web. You can edit the description. You can say, I wanna mark this as new. You can add an image in here as well. Um, this other tab, this basically just allows you to do some unique things at the ticket screen. So when this item comes into view, if I wanted to be able to override the description, I could. 
Um, if I wanted to prompt for price, I could do that too. Most people may be prompt for unit, especially if you have multiple units to sell um, at point of sale. But I do wanna point out some unique things about um, CounterPoint. You can sell admission tickets. So we can actually set up admission tickets as an item. And when you sell an admission ticket, not only does it print out a receipt, but it will print out the tickets. You can also sell weighted items as well. So if you happen to sell produce and you need to weigh those, um, you can make this a weighted item and you can define the tear weight. Um, and then you can set up substitutes. Substitutes are great to set up if you are utilizing something like kits and you want the ability to um, be able to substitute components in a particular kit. So sales kits would be, um, let's say a patio set that comes with the table and the chairs and the cushions and the umbrella, but you have the ability to swap out the color of the umbrella. That's an example of a kit. You can sell it all for one price, but you might also be able to sell the umbrella separately, the table separately and the chairs. Um, so that's an example of a sales kit. Um, uh, we also have tag along kits, which you can set up that would be associated with an item and it prompts the cashier to ask a question. So if you're selling um, a t-shirt and you have the option to monogram that or a picture and you can have it framed, um, that would be examples of, of, of upselling. Um, or maybe if you're a garden center and you're delivering bark mulch um, and there's a delivery charge, you could have that be um, an, uh, a sales kit too, a tag along kit. So that, those are some other examples. Um, CounterPoint lets you transfer merchandise from one store to another. You can even do a transfer advice report that says, hey, what should I transfer to my other store? What are they low at? Um, so you can do a transfer advice report. Um, as far as pricing is concerned, out of the box CounterPoint has three levels of pricing. Um, you can extend that up to six levels of pricing. Um, but here under price rules in inventory is where you would do some special pricing or special promotions. Um, this is where you might set up um, mix and matches would be for BOGO. So buy one or buy two, get one at half price. Um, special pricing, maybe, maybe you run a Wednesday promo on a select group of items. That might be a special price. Promotional pricing would be um, something that has a start date and an end date. Um, so maybe a Labor Day promo. So it's gonna start on Friday and it's gonna end on Monday. Um, and then you can pick and choose what items that you wanna put um, in this promotion. Um, and it can be by a discount, it can be a flat rate price, um, whole different options. Contract pricing is going to be um, senior, military, um, employee, prices that are unique to a customer. So if you set up a contract price in price rules, that means if you're gonna give that discount at point of sale, you need to pull that customer into the transaction. So that would be your VIPs who get special prices. So you'd wanna pull them into the transaction for that, okay? Um, there are other ways to discount too. So if you don't want to have to do this, but you do have this flexibility in your store where you'll give a senior discount, but you push a button to do that, um, that's discount codes. And those can easily be set up on the touch screen as well. So there, again, there are uh, different ways to, to, get, to get to where you need to go. Um, price sheets. Um, are for blanket price changes. So if you have a vendor that goes up on his prices, then you can actually um, set up a price sheet, pull in all those vendors' items, and then do a 10% um, a increase with a rounding method of 99 cents or something like that. So you could do that. Um, each of the applications have their own set of reports. Inventory is where you're gonna see the meat of the reports. So this is the inventory reports. I could do an inventory analysis, um, evaluation report, um, inventory aging. So all these reports come standard within CounterPoint. 
Um, and that a lot of these reports allow you the ability to add columns and rows and do filters uh, to get at the specific data that you're looking to get at. Okay. Um, and then there are views in CounterPoint as well. Um, this is an inventory detailed view. Okay. So if I click this, um, I can see where all my items are. I can even um, I hit that my food items show up first. Um, I can even filter down just to um, uh, my accessories here. So if I want to look at all my items and I have um, minimum quantities, maximum, what's available, what's committed, all the item details here. And you can even add more columns. So with the column designer, if you want to see more um, inventory features here, you could do that. Okay, so you can add those columns. This is a filter. You'll see this a lot in CounterPoint. So pricing and promotions, where you see your reports. Um, if you don't fill anything in, then you get everything. If you fill something in, um, then it will drill down into the specific data that you want. And I do want to point out, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to get too detailed here. You could easily do a right click and customize and add any filter box that is available in inventory. So again, we created that season field. So if I wanted to do add season in here, I could easily do that. And then now just be looking at my summer seasonal items and determine what's on hand and maybe decide how I wanna, what I wanna do with that. Um, okay. Um, you can add customers on the fly. I don't know, we talked about that at point of sale, but add customers on the fly. Um, this is where customers live. Um, and we do want to have an accounts receivable add-on option. So if you do allow on account purchases, whether you can bill them or invoice them, the accounts receivable option will allow you the ability to do that. There is a built-in loyalty program. It is a points-based program. So you define um, what the dollar value is for each point. And then after they achieve so many points, what their reward is. And you can define those redemption rewards. Okay. Um, purchasing is where you're gonna go to buy products for the store. So um, you can start by just creating a purchase request. Um, and I'll just do a quick one here so I can show you some of the functionality. So pick your vendor. I'm gonna do the discount merchandise vendor. Okay, um, should have all the details. Um, you, can, you can buy for multiple stores at a time as well, or you can buy for individual stores. If you're buying for multiple stores, you have these options. You can um, buy separate, so you, you can create one purchase order to separately be shipped to stores, okay? So you'll be buying for five stores and you're gonna say, this is going to this store, this is going to that store, and that's going to that store, and it'll ship directly to the stores. Merged means you're gonna take one purchase order and it's gonna come into your warehouse um, to be centrally processed and that it's gonna automatically create transfers to its destination store. Um, and that happens automatically within CounterPoint once you buy for that store, okay? We're just gonna do a basic PO here. I'm gonna get to the, the line section. This basically is your order date, delivery date, cancel date, um, all these details. You can have comments for purchase orders as well. Um, so I can just start adding an item that I'm gonna sell, that I'm gonna purchase here enter a quantity, okay? I can also hit this add items button and it's gonna save what I'm working on. It's gonna bring me out to a calculator and it's gonna say, okay, you're buying from discount merchandise distributors. How do you, what do you wanna buy? Um, do you want us to, do you wanna bring all your items that are at minimum up to maximum for this vendor? Do you wanna replenish stock? Um, for from a sale date, so you can look at you know sales from a previous date and replenish stock accordingly. You can look at um, days of supply. So how many days of supply do you want to have? Um, and then we also give you the option to do customer only orders. So if you do customer only orders, 
you can um, order this way as well. In this scenario, I'm gonna bring my minimums up to maximum. I'm not gonna click any of these, but I could adjust for open POs and so forth. You probably would, but I'm not gonna do it in a demo stage. So I'm gonna hit next and I should get some things that pop up here. So this is what it's recommending that I order. These are based on my mins and maxes. So I can now say, okay, I'm gonna get this. Let me add that. I'll do some chips and we'll add those lines to my purchase order. So here we have added those lines to my purchase order. This is demo data. Normally you'd have some cost in here. I can go ahead and update my cost here as well if I wanted to. Okay. Um, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and um, post my purchase order. It will produce a, a purchase request journal. So you can see what you bought. Got a lot of free things in there. And um, this is my purchase order forms. Okay, you can go ahead and save that and email it to your vendors. Um, and now my um, order is out there. So the next step is receiving it. So if I come in here to receive that, I can auto assign find my purchase order. These are all my open POs. Okay, so this happens to be my purchase order. So I'll go ahead and click um, OK. These are some uh, default rules that you can set up. And then these are the items that I ordered. Okay, so I can go through the process of verifying and making sure that I got what I needed, update my costs accordingly, And then now I can just post this. Okay, posting it is gonna bring that merchandise in my inventory. Okay, so this is my receivings journal. And then I, you don't have to print these, these are printed for demo purposes. And then I can just start printing labels. If you print labels, now you might just store manufacturer's labels too. So if you print labels, you can uh, print labels at this point. And again, we work with Zebra label, label printers. All right, I think the last thing that I want to show you and then we can take some questions is a report. So I'm gonna go into inventory and then I'll go to reports and I'm gonna show you the merchandise analysis report. Um, so on this report, you have the ability to, to customize the look and feel. It can be, this one report can be multiple reports. So I can analyze my items by group or by item. We'll do group. Um, I can look at subcategory, um, main category, season if I wanted to, because once you make something a field in your database, it's there to use wherever you want it to. I want to look at my top 50 items. I can rank it by number of transactions, quantity sold. Let's do quantity sold. And then I can look at this by um, year to date, month to date, today, week to date, or just by altering um, this date, it's going to put me into custom. So I can do a custom view as well. I can show some graphics. This is what's on my report right now, okay? But if I wanna change this, I'll show you how to do that when you get to your columns. I can look at all locations, a specific loca a location group or a specific location. Let's do the specific location. And then now I can come to my columns and say, I don't care so much about the percentage, but I do wanna make see if I have any returns. So I can add returns to that mix. Okay, this is a 10 column report. I'm using six of my columns here. Now I can come here and as I mentioned, this is where you can um, add filter boxes if you want to um, or drill down to specific data. So if I wanted to come here and let's say I wanted to add my season box, I would do season is exactly 
and then I'll just go back to simplify. So now I could drill down to a season if I wanted to. So I could add a seasonal item in here, but I'm gonna leave it all open just for uh, demo purposes. And then the next tab is item number or location. So I'm gonna hit preview. So here is my merchandise analysis report. Okay, so this is all the data I asked for. It gave me some graphics, dropped a key in here. These are the details of my report. Um, ranking, um, it's highlighted where I'm showing it by quantity sold. So it's, it's ranking it by quantity sold. And these are my categories and subcategories cost of sales, profit, returns. Got a lot of returns on apparel. All right, so that's an example of a report. Just wanted to show you that. There are hundreds of reports built into CounterPoint. Um, and I think at this point, uh, this is where I'm going to end it. So we'll open it now to any questions that you guys might have. So believe it or not, there's actually a lot more functionality to CounterPoint and a lot more detail. Um, if you have a specific industry or one of those functions that Darlene mentioned that you want to drill down into a little bit more, definitely check out our YouTube channel. There's uh, videos on a ton of different topics. Um, so check that out for more information. Um, we do have some questions coming in. Uh, someone asks, does CounterPoint work offline for any period of time for sales? Yeah, that's a great question. And I'm sorry I didn't hit that. That's a really important question. So yes, um, CounterPoint will allow you the ability to work offline. Um, and uh, like if you're um, connected to your server through the internet and the server goes down or you can't get to your server, then yes, you can run offline. Um, and then um, that data would be synced up again once you get reconnected. Great. Uh, another question came in. What is the maximum amount of items allowed in inventory? There's no maximum. So it's really related to the amount of space that you have on your server. CounterPoint is a client server based application that sits on a server. Um, it's not like a subscription based application that says after you have so many items, then you need to go up to the next level. So that's when I, when I answered, it depends on the amount of space that you have on your server, because there is no limitation with CounterPoint, um, because you actually, you own the licenses and you install it on a server, either locally or in the cloud. We do offer cloud services as well, but it's not a subscription-based application, so there's no maximums. Great, thank you everybody, appreciate it. Thank you, Darlene. Thanks everybody, bye.